Hey folks, so this mod's been quite a long time coming. Uh, as you can see here, I have a wonderfully pristine DMG, except that it has a little bit of an issue with the screen. Uh, but other than these dots in the screen, which are commonly referred to as screen cancer, or my preferred term, screen rot, um, which unfortunately is not really fixable without replacing the LCD entirely. Other than that, this is a perfectly working DMG. The uh, volume pot's a little crusty, but eh, it's easy enough to fix. You just gotta, I guess, break it in, um, or, or clean it, I suppose, would be the better option. But uh, that's not really the point of this video. I want to go ahead and get this here installed. I got this nice, brand new kit. Uh, this just came out, well, this week, actually. Uh, I am one of the first people to get a kit who's not a reseller, uh, so I figure I want to go ahead and do a video on it. Uh, full disclosure, this was provided to me by Retro Game Repair Shop. Uh, super cool store. Um, I, I, I bought several things from them so far, super happy with them, but I did not pay for this. They provided this to me for free. That being said, they aren't paying for my opinion. Um, no one is. This is this is solely my view, my take on the kit. Uh, but this is how it comes. It comes in this big, huge box that you can use as a case for your Game Boy. When all said and done, let me zoom out a little so you can see the size comparison. Uh, but anyway, pop the four latches off. This is actually before I get into it. It's basically the same thing Funny Playing's doing, but it's a bigger size box because this doesn't fit a Game Boy. This does. Anyway, pop that open. We got the kit inside. Here's the case. You can see how nicely that fits. It's a little tight, but it's foam. It'll compress. But I'm going to take that out because I don't need the case now, but I will need the Game Boy. All right. So... Now this might change depending on which vendor you get it from, but this is this is what the kit comes with right now. And this is my first time playing with one of these. Bring the camera down a little. So looks like we've got a couple strips of tape. We've got a replacement front board. Now, um, keep in mind that this does replace the entire front board of your Game Boy console, so you don't actually have to desolder your screen or anything. The only soldering involved is you're going to have to reattach your speaker, uh, but otherwise this is going to replace the contrast wheel. And um, you'll hook the screen up through this. It looks like there are a couple different solder points for maybe a touch sensor for brightness control, but this wheel right here actually will serve as a brightness control uh, and a few other things, but we'll get to that in a bit. Next, in this other baggie, we have the actual conversion kit, the electronics, the, the brains behind the operation ribbon cable to connect these two. Ribbon cable to connect the front board and the back board of the DMG and then the LCD itself. Now, because I'm sure quite a few of you are thinking about it, this is not the same LCD that the uh, Game Boy Advance IPS kits use. It's a slightly different LCD and as you can see it's actually a little bit taller. Um, which means my plan of cramming this in a Game Boy Pocket is probably not going to work. A uh, little bit... Yeah, the dimensions are different because it's a little bit thinner. You can see that way, but it's also a little bit taller. Uh, the connector is on a completely different side. It actually does look pretty similar to the um, the other kit, the one with the the all-in-one kit with the little tiny LCDs. Um, I don't know. We'll, 
we'll see how it works. That's going to plug in there. Probably have this backwards, but figure that out later. Holy cow. Okay. Before I mess with that, let's take a sec to go over the instructions. So the manufacturer provides this, um, let me kill that light so get rid of the glare. This basically image, you see wherever my mouse cursor is, there it is. Top left, it's just showing you, you know, here's what the kit looks like, blah, blah, blah. When it's plugged in, that is what the, uh, not really sure how they got that image unless they have because that's not plugged into anything. Anyway, um, but that's that's where the actual image of the display is going to be on the LCD. Uh, and as far as install goes, you just need to trim that screw post, that screw post, that screw post, that screw post, and that one of these little supports here. Super easy as far as trims go. Oh, and you also need to trim this little ledge here on the left. But uh, this is on the back of the shell, not on the front because that's where the contrast wheel goes, or the uh, brightness selector wheel, which is thicker than the contrast wheel. Otherwise, you got to line it up on the top, yada yada. I think I accidentally just zoomed in. That's cool. And that's what the tape is for, just line up the LCD. I'm going to see about making some better spacers, but that's uh, that's another thing for another time. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm, oops. I'm probably going to, um, let's see, probably going to fast forward a little bit because there are like 8 million screws in this thing. So bear with me while I get this taken apart. Uh, mine is one of the older models here, I think. Is it? Yeah. So all of the screws are GIS screws. On some of the newer model Game Boys, uh, the screws on the outside, you can see in there a tri-point, but this is one of the 1989 models. And I have already been inside this thing and I did already make some repairs, but that shouldn't have anything to do with what we need to do. got the six screws out just separate these two halves that ribbon cable can pull out and we'll set this aside or rather I should set this aside um, full disclosure you do not have to but I am going to be reshelling this so I'm going to pull it out of here um, this will also let me be able to test power usage because that's it's one of the things I like knowing I like knowing you know, oh, we used to be able to get approximately 30 hours, so how much can we get out of it now? And if I pull it out of the case, we can test that pretty easy. Okay, just four more screws, and this whole thing should pop out. Don't lose this. I lost one on one of my other Game Boys, and I'm still salty about it. Oh dear. All right, I don't even remember what I did to this one. I thought I did something to it. I guess not. Oh, you can see it's kind of melty. That was a, uh, whoops. A little overzealous with the heat gun. Anyway, let's see what kind of power usage we get on this thing. Just with the uh, stock. hardware. Ooh. That's not supposed to happen. I believe I just ruined this ribbon cable. That's embarrassing. I hate these connectors. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Find out in just a second. Okay. So, 
So with this, so on this side. Luckily, we don't need that ribbon cable in case I did ruin it, but it's always nice to not ruin things. All right, so that since this is a DMG and runs on four batteries instead of two, I'm going to set it to 4.8 because that is pretty much double uh, my 2.4 that I usually test them at. And let's see what happens. Oh no. I think I ruined my ribbon cable. Shoot. I'm gonna have to pause and take apart another Game Boy. I mean, luckily I don't need this ribbon cable, but it's still frustrating. There we go. Now it's working. So I'm showing, well actually let's let's test that in the game. So I'm testing with Pokemon Yellow version and you'll see why in just a minute. Uh, but in game, outside the gym here, we're pulling just about 50 milliamps at 4.74 volts. Uh, that makes that makes sense. Uh, don't forget that power usage shouldn't be measured in amps. It should be measured in watts because it's a uh, it's, it's an independent unit. So watts is calculated by multiplying your volts by your amps. So if we take a look at the watts and how much power usage this thing is sucking up, we can actually see it's pretty comparable to Game Boy Pocket, which makes sense. Don't forget that a Game Boy Pocket runs on half the volts, so it would make sense that a Game Boy Pocket would show that it takes twice the wattage. Alright, set these parts aside. I need to focus on the front here, and uh, bear with me again while I take out all 8 million of these screws. All right, so because I'm reshelling this thing, I don't actually need to do this, but I do need screws for my new shell. Uh, so really you just gotta take this apart, pop off the speaker, uh, and then pop the speaker onto the new board, but we'll, we'll do that in a second. We'll do some tests first, uh, but otherwise you don't really need this front board. And um, I'm not gonna be using this casing. So, but don't worry, this casing is the same as the casing I'm using. I'm just, I don't know. I want to use my uh, retro modding shell here. So, like the uh, instructions showed here, ta -da, it's just the uh, four screw posts and then one of those supports. I'm going to see if I can't do that with some flush cutters. And a clear shell might not be the best idea for this, but that looks like the only screw post that actually shows through. Oh. I think you can use like banana oil or something to hide the cuts. But that's it. Trims, the trimming is all done. So now, I'm not going to tape this in just yet, but that'll go in like that. 
presumably in the center there. Let's try it out. So direction of the ribbon cable does not matter. That is to say, um, doesn't matter which side. I'm sorry, it does matter which direction. The contacts do go up. Plug it into this board first. Not surprisingly, it goes into that much easier. That'll get folded like that. And this one, again, side doesn't matter. I believe the contacts go up. I'll have to double check that. We'll find out in just a second, I guess. Sorry, camera decided that uh, I was taking an early break. Um, anyway, I was, uh, before we get back to that, I was looking at the shell and the screen and the front PCB and everything, and I actually don't see a reason why you have to trim these, whoops, these two screw posts. It looks like you really just have to trim that one, that one, and then the support right here. I don't think you need to trim those other two. Um, of course, it's it's too late for me. You must go out now. Uh, of course, I've already trimmed them. So unless I start over in another shell, I can't really test that, but it's what I think. Okay. Now, pretty sure that goes like that. That's interesting. That definitely goes... The screen goes contacts down. I'm having a hard time getting this thing. I'm missing something. No. Okay, there we go. That bale just requires an unusual amount of pressure because of the angle of the connector. But it's okay. It's good. That'll fold like that. That'll go like that. All is well. Let's try it out. So that is obviously the wrong voltage. Close enough. I got nothing. I assume it's booting, but I have no sound because I have no speaker and I have no screen. So something ain't right. My first guess is it's this ribbon cable. This is Flip it around and see what happens. Yeah. 
There we go. Yep, had that backwards. That's okay. No harm done. And, oh, before I do that, let's just get this thing booted up. Ah, spoilers, but that's okay. So, we're now up to 110 milliamps. So, this thing's pretty thirsty. Let's try other brightnesses. I don't know what this is at. And I don't know if this is a um, encoder or what. So, it might be on high brightness. You just spin it. All the way down to low brightness, we get to 69 milliamps. Works better if you spin it slow, not fast. And it looks like that was high brightness. Okay. 100, 110. So there are some other cool things you can do. Like if you click this, it'll change the color palette. The classic one there. Um, but we'll, we'll play more with that when I get this thing together here. So before I power this off, I am going to go ahead and test fit it in here just to see how we have it lined up. So it looks like with the uh, image, you know what, let me grab a lens. Hang on. Uh, got another Game Boy. Lens doesn't even stick down to this one, so I just got to peel the tape off. one-handed. Okay. So, that will go right there. And yeah. Looks like just do your best to line it up on the top there and then do your best, or to line it up. Do your best to make it flush with the top and then center it as best as possible within the window. And then when you got the lens on it, it should look good. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. All right. I'm not going to use this lens. I was just using it for uh, testing, I guess. All right. So now if you'll excuse me, I think let's go ahead and get this lens in place and then we'll have a uh, screw, screwing, screw. I'm going to install some screws and uh, we'll go from there. Bear with me just a second. I'm going to go ahead and grab some double-sided tape. Instead of using this tape that it comes with and just going across the back like the uh, instructions want you to do, I'm going to use some double-sided tape on the top and the bottom, because uh, this is a clear shell. Well, mostly clear. Semi-clear. I think it'll look better that way. I'll be back in just a sec. All right, so I got the cheap stuff, but it'll be perfect for our needs. This is just uh, some generic double-sided tape for uh, installing like a phone digitizer or something. Uh, I got it on AliExpress. I do not recommend it whatsoever for what they recommend it for. But it's good for this. The reason I'm using this stuff in particular is because if I ever have to remove it, I think I can do so without destroying the LCD. And we're just going to do lines on the top and on the bottom because the uh, sides won't actually line up. So it doesn't make, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to waste the tape. Not that I don't have a lot of tape. And... Oh. 
I was worried about how that was going to look, but this is going to have a lens on it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay. So then this is going to go in there just like that. Just like that. I should have grabbed the tweezers too. Nice. I suppose while I'm thinking about it, one of the downsides of using a different LCD compared to the other kits is that if you accidentally damage this, I don't know where you can get replacements yet. I have no idea what other things this screen might be in, if anything. Okay, that looks pretty good. Cool. Wow. That was quick. I almost ruined it. I had a screw sticking up and I sat it right down on the LCD. Anyway, uh, instead of using traditional buttons, I'm just going to use these like uh, silicone buttons I got from Kitchbent. I think I think I want to try them out. I can always swap them out if I hate them. Oh, let me turn on my soldering iron for the speaker. And let's do that real quick. What I do with the front half? So I suppose you could take this opportunity to upgrade the speaker if you want, but in this particular DMG, there's zero issues with this speaker. Would have made more sense to just grab one wire and then pull. Almost no soldering. Almost. But at least the soldering is real easy. The second pad, it's not designed very, um, it's not designed with soldering in mind. You can see it's just, there's no like thermal standoff, so it takes a little bit to heat up. Okay. I think. We're, uh, we're almost done. So this, go like this. On this board itself, on the little board, all of the pins for everything are uh, face down. On both the ribbon cables. Now, bear with me while I screw this thing together and accidentally whack my camera with my screwdriver. All right, so I have four extra screws up here. That's to be expected because I did snip off four screw posts. Uh, otherwise, I think the rest of these are just for assembling the shell, which I should have already taken the time to do, but I did not. So, oh, I also forgot 
we want to trim this part for the brightness wheel. That's easy enough. Okay. So I need to transfer over the parts here. I need to transfer over these uh, battery terminals. Should be pretty easy. There's just a little tab you gotta press in. And they drop out. You can see on this one. But for reinstallation, would make sense push the tab back out. And you can see on this one I had to do some corrosion removal. But it came out all right. Should have replaced it entirely, but didn't have extras. So I am just now realizing that my shell actually did come with new screws that I should have used, but a little too late, I guess. Uh, we're pretty much done here. Just gotta connect this up. I should have put the lens on first, because now I'm gonna have to clean fingerprints off of it. Heat plugging these ribbons in. This big ribbon goes contacts up. Hopefully I don't slip on this one too. That would be terrible. Okay. Okay. Oh, we're getting something. Boom. Finish screwing these in. Hopefully the camera doesn't cut me off, but if it does, I'm just going to finish these. I'll be back in a sec. That cut was very cruel and completely unintentional, I'm sorry. Um, the phone overheated again. Uh, I swear, I'm, I'm working on a solution, I promise. Um, but otherwise, 
I do still have the uh, lens to install here. I did clean up the screen because I kept touching it. And I have the tape on here to deal with any dust because, well, quite frankly, my workstation is a little bit dusty. I should have peeled this off first, but apparently not a very wise man. So it would have been nice if that came off too. There we go. I'm not going to worry about it being perfectly clean because I know this thing's just going to gather dust anyway. Or rather, dust is just going to get in there. I don't mean to say I'm not going to use it. I just, yeah. I mean to say it's not perfectly sealed. Okay. Probably should have. Uh... Oh, my new lens has a thingy on the inside. Oh well. Probably should have uh, cleaned the uh, or masked off the inside there. The lens, like I did on my latest IPS install for Game Boy Advance, but that's besides the point. Um, so far. I think this turned out pretty nice. The install itself is, well, quite frankly, it's pretty easy. It's really not that bad. Um, as far as soldering goes, the only soldering you need to do is for the speaker. The uh, trimming itself isn't that difficult. I'd say the hardest part is just, frank, quite frankly, dealing with the uh, DMG's eccentricities. The thing bit me. Um, let's try it out, I guess, huh? Let's try this first. Pokemon Yellow. The volume is backwards compared to other Game Boys. It throws me off every time. How cool is that? It's technically not in color, it's just a custom color palette. So instead of using uh, dark gray, light gray, black and white, it uses yellow, pink, black and white for uh, a fake color. Actually, let's go back. If we click through the uh, different options, I think I need to trim that a little bit better back a screw off. I'll trim it better later. There we go. You can see how the different color palettes affect it. Looks like it just changes dark gray for really dark gray, light gray for lightish gray, and then white for green or blue or purple or whatever. That's pretty cool. So I don't really have a uh, backlit DMG to compare to this thing. There we go. That looks better. But otherwise this thing is freaking cool. I did just notice a little bit of a... Uh, something. I don't know. Let's, let's get it in game. Let's actually test it out, huh? So as far as any tearing goes, I don't know if it's just Pokemon Yellow. Kind of looks jittery. But 
Again, I think that's just Pokemon Yellow. What's that? It's an Electra. Yeah, let's try a different game. I just wanted to show up Pokemon Yellow because that yellow uh, Easy Flasher, that yellow color scheme is just really cool. What the hell? Okay, I guess we're not. <laughs> Use my EverDrive instead. That's. What the hell is that about? Is that because I'm melting? Yeah. It must be because I accidentally melted the uh, connector. Well, it still boots a flash cart, so that's nice. Not really a surprise, though, because these are freshly charged batteries. I'm going to try two different test ROMs here. The first one should show us if there's any uh, tearing or dropping. Now, I don't know how that looks in camera because I'm shaking a little bit, but that's just me. Let's set it down. That way you can see it nicely and you don't have to worry about me holding it. Um, that looks perfectly smooth to me. I see zero issues. I'm happy with that. Let's try the other test ROM. Oh, I hope that was in focus. So this other one, I had to move the camera to hit the button. This other one is basically the same thing, but every 256 frames or whatever, it does a reset on the screen. So it's going to jump right there. And you can see when the screen resets, it does... Uh, there, there's a line right about here. When the screen resets. Yeah. Looks like it's... Oh, shaking camera. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's not terrible. That's kind of to be expected. And you can actually see these sorts of artifacts on the original screen. So it's not, I mean, it's not like this new screen is introducing an issue. Uh, but that is to say, when the screen resets, so when you're going from the top level to the bottom level in Pokemon Pinball or something, or every time you enter a fight in this game, you will see... That split second when the screen resets, you might see a, uh, a line on the lower, on two-thirds of the way down the screen. But that's not bad at all. This, this screen kit actually handles this test a lot better than the, um, the Game Boy Pocket kit that this manufacturer makes. The uh, Game Boy Pocket Kit just ends up dropping the whole frame. But, yeah, that's that's nice. I'm happy with that. I mean, i got to play some more uh, other games. Really see how this works out, but this looks really nice so far. Let's try Pokemon Silver. And then we'll try Link's Awakening, and then I think I'm, think we're done. Now again, this even though the LCD itself is in color, this is still a DMG, so there's no color in the game other than the custom palettes that the screen itself is doing. This isn't the DMG. No, oh, we'll we'll do that. So yeah, Pokemon Yellow was just jittery. That's just how that game is. Well, I try not to test with that one. I like Pokemon Silver because it's nice and uh, nice and smooth. Okay. Let's try Link's Awakening. That one last test. I also like how it remembers the palette you select upon reboots. That's pretty cool. Now we don't back that up. 
Zelda.gb So on the other game boy kits uh Sorry, kind of lost my train of thought there. Um, on the other Game Boy kits, this fence on the top here, when the screen is scrolling past, you can see it kind of ghosting. I don't see that on this kit at all. There's another issue, and I'll have to review the footage to see if this is happening here because I don't see it in person. But this chain kind of flickers in place all the way until you get over to the other screen. But I'm not seeing that here either. Oh, sorry. So we're not watching it as it scrolls. We're watching it in the same place on the LCD. And I don't see I don't see any issues, so that looks pretty good. Oh, but I did see this kind of weird line going across here. I wonder if that's part of the chain or if that's something else. I don't know, I see it here again. That's interesting. I, I don't really know how to describe it because I don't know what it is. And again, this is such an edge case. I don't think it's... I think this is probably the only game I might ever notice this in. I don't even notice it now that I switched the color palettes. Could even be just a bug with that color palette. That would be interesting. Yeah, I don't see it anymore at all. Interesting. Well, I think this is super cool. I, of course, need to play a little bit more with it, play some games, see what's going on. But so far, that's, that's nice. I like it. I'm really digging it. That was brightness all the way up. We can lower the brightness. Oh, let me see on low brightness, because on the very last kit that I tested out, the... Uh, Game Boy Advance IPS kit on very low brightness. I could see some uh, flickering of the LCD or of the backlight. I don't see that in this one. So I know um, it's kind of nice actually that they fixed that issue or maybe this LCD just doesn't have that issue. I know very late in the development of this particular kit they did swap out LCDs. I'm guessing they were going to use this one originally, but then, um, I don't know, something was going on. They decided to use this LCD instead. I'm happy with it. It looks super good. Uh, my one complaint about the new LCD is just from a spare parts perspective, but it's really not that big of a deal. But uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and play with this. If there's any test you guys want me to, you know, anything you want me to test out in particular, let me know. Um, otherwise, yeah, this is a pretty cool kit. I'm not too happy with this shell from Retro Modding, but I mean, I suppose that's something different. That has what the fuck? That has almost nothing to do with the kit itself. That's just my personal preferences there, but this kit itself is really nice. I'm super happy with it. Uh, I do have another one of these kits. I was going to try shoving it in a Game Boy Pocket, but with how much taller this LCD is, I really don't think I can do that. So, um, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts, what I should do with that LCD, and uh, we'll go from there. 
Uh, I do have some ideas myself that I might go with, but uh, otherwise, I think that's all for the evening. Thanks for watching, guys. Have an excellent, excellent night. Quick addendum. Um, I was posting pictures on Discord, and uh, some people had some questions on the instructions. And I got to thinking about it, and, well, the instructions provided and the actual hardware don't seem to line up. Um, so maybe the instructions were made before they finalized the hardware, and then they just kind of went with it. Uh, but anyway, there are these tabs on the back of the LCD that you can fold out. There's another one under this PCB, but there's no sense folding it out because the PCB is in the way. But if you put this PCB on, connect the ribbon, and fold it and line up the edge of these extra little tabs here and stick it down, you do, of course, have to peel off this tape that's on the back. But the adhesive happened to be convenient for sticking this board down. But anyway... Peel that off, stick this on, uh, fold up those three tabs. You can actually line them up with holes in the front board here and stick them down that way, and then you just twist these. I'm not going to do that now because I don't want to put this together just yet. You can seat that in there. And then your screen is attached to the front board instead of the front half of your shell. This is probably easier to install this way uh, but it I don't I don't know I guess I'll have to do another install see what happens um, there we go the holes don't line up perfectly but more than good enough the only thing you have to be careful of is you might get it crooked so you have to watch that bottom one Make sure the angle on that is the same on there. But yeah, once you get that in there, just take some pliers or something, grab that, and then twist it. But I'm not going to do that because, like I said, I want to save this install for something else, do that at another time. But we'll, I don't know, maybe I'll try that out in a future video or something. I'll do another DMG or just redo this one, I don't know. Uh... But yeah, I guess choice is yours. Let me know if that works any better.